What's up, peers, and welcome to Join the Wasabikas, a Bitcoin privacy podcast. Uh, today, I'm joined by the one and only Ben Ark, who has been a tinkerer in the Bitcoin space for quite a while, and he has done some fabulous innovations in the Lightning Network ecosystem, uh, including stellar hardware tricks and tips, as well as cool software applications that really make Lightning usable in a fun way already today uh, and well already a year ago or so uh, but yes uh, we are going today explore a bit more about the technology of lightning uh what's out there what we can use uh and yeah how that impacts our privacy as well uh and as you already know uh the team is still working on wasabi 2.0 however here at the podcast we are already at the podcasting 2.0 uh, so get yourself a new podcasting app.com like breeze wallet uh and smash the boost button for this podcast as well as all the other great big Bitcoin knowledge archives that you are accumulating. So without any further ado, Ben, how are you? Very good. I like that introduction a lot. Um, I'm just like, I'm a tinkerer, a hobbyist, and just a bit of a goofball making like little things which I really want to exist and they don't exist and it annoys you for so long you end up having to make it yourself, but it takes me ages because I'm not a very good developer and I have to get people to review my code. Um, so your introduction was very good for my ego. I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> it maybe I'll be a lot better than I am, <laughs> but no, I'm just a hobbyist. Yeah, no, and I think that's that's one of the first areas interesting to dive down to because you're, as you said, right, not much of a developer, not much of a hardware tinkerer, uh, yet still you apply yourself qu quite a lot. Like, where do you get that motivation? Um, it, I mean, it, it is. It's, it's just. It really is just the frustration of something not existing. I'll often I'll bug people to try and make something exist, and then if it doesn't exist, eventually you have to just do it yourself. Um, and uh, over time, I suppose it, it you know has gotten a little easier. But I didn't really start developing until a couple of years ago. Um, I was a teacher before then, like woodwork. So you know, I was all right carpentry, but not so good at. Um, developing and uh and, and electronics but yeah i got i, I kind of got there in the end on, on some things but i find bitcoin is an incredibly forgiving community of, of developers and people and um people get excited let's say if you start using somebody's library they've developed for some bitcoin thing uh, and if you reach out directly to the developer of the library they'll just be excited you're using their library and they'll want to help you implement it um and uh help you implement it responsibly as well so you know because obviously people's funds are at risk so i find it a very nurturing environment for building stuff um and it's also i think very important to remember to encourage people to build if, if they're building something and you know they're a little bit stuck and then maybe they'll ask a stupid question then you know if, if you just help them out a little bit then in the future you know they'll probably build something quite useful lots of people will be able to make use of um uh so yeah so I, I very much encourage that um i started with the i think it was the lightning hack days in berlin organized by fulmo and um christian rutzel and uh they they for me that they they were the the the, the beginnings of my tinkering uh because just because of that because it is a it was a very nurturing encouraging environment uh and even though they could see i was didn't really know what i was doing um they, they still you know encouraged me to just continue persevere and then they point you know they were great convening people so getting People who didn't know what they were doing, sitting next to people who didn't know what they were doing, and then we were able to build interesting things together. Um, so yeah, uh, that's that's kind of you know the long and short of over the past few years, I suppose. Yeah, you know the the vision to have a problem solved that is currently still existing, and then having nobody around to fix them. Uh, so you have to do it yourself. Uh, that's great. Uh, I'm, I'm driving a bit of a different strategy, right? I'm also not a developer. So if I have a problem, for example, in Wasabi, then instead of fixing it myself, I just yell at Nopara for a couple of weeks <laughs> until he fixes it. Well, that works. <laughs> but it takes so, longer. Yeah. yeah. No, but it does work because we had, um, I made like, a, um, it was like a very simple piece of hardware, which you could, you know, display an invoice on, pay it, and then it just triggered a physical relay switch to turn something on um we actually spoke about it off air so you know the example i gave was a jacob's ladder um and uh in, in the tutorial video i did but i also used it for like retrofitting these arcade machines and a bunch of other things anyway it was never i never really finished the project to make it super user friendly to to to, to implement yourself and um Somebody was just dead into the idea of relays, Bitcoin relays. They like set up a Telegram group uh, and they started, you know, talking about building their own hardware and blah, 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 and started talking about, you know, 
building the software for it. And uh, when I got in on that, I was like, okay, 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 I'll, I'll do it, I'll do it. And I, I realized there was enough sort of momentum. So actually, the bugging, bugging people is 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 important as well. Like if you want something to exist and it doesn't exist, then if you if you bug people um, enough, <laughs> then and, and if enough people bug them on the same topic, they'll think, okay, well this this is something which is in demand. I did it recently actually for um, uh, Bitcoin JS. I wanted a simple function where it would craft me a partially signed Bitcoin transaction if I fed it an address, um, an amount, so you know a, a, an address to send to an amount, and then an XPub. So I give it my XPub, I give it an amount, and I give it uh, an address to send to, and then it will build me a PSBT, um, which I can then just take off and then go sign on my hardware device and then um, um, launch the, you know, publish the transaction. Uh, but that function just didn't seem to exist. And I, I thought this is really useful for developers and I actually need it as well. So I, I just went on a bit of a, a campaign for about three or four days bugging people. Um, and then actually chuck some stats into a bounty for it because I, I thought, okay, I really want that. You know, I can't do this myself, but if someone else could make it, that'd be great. Um, but actually, it was someone did make it, and they didn't actually claim the bounty, which I thought was very nice and a perfect example of how nice these Bitcoin developers are, <laughs> and how if you bug them enough um, uh, and they build something which they think is useful, then you know they'll just do it for, for, for altruism alone. Um, but yeah, Napar, he's uh, I bet he's very patient with uh, <laughs> with everybody down in Wasabi. No, he just keeps telling me that my feature requests are impossible. <laughs> I like it, yeah. Yeah, and I'm, I, I find it so interesting, but right? because you have your, your background in education, you're, you're a teacher, uh, and how did that background kind of prime you for the role that you play now in the Bitcoin space? Uh, well, I suppose it didn't, really. Um, part of what drew me towards teaching, I suppose, because I worked specifically with kids who had behavioral issues, um, uh, and maybe the thing which pulled me towards that, you know, you see a bunch of people who are kind of disenfranchised and they don't really click or vibe with society and they, they sort of lose their place in society. And you see there's a lot of wasted potential, um, which just really ends up just being wasted away. And it's always very frustrating. Um, I think that's a similar worldview uh, to that of a Bitcoiner, which kind of sees a lot of wasted potential, which is being stifled by a very clunky, legacy financial system um which which you know again as we spoke off air you know if you change the underlying value transfer mechanism then the whole architecture of society could change just as if you changed you know the internet from being based on advertising revenue to being based on more the model like your podcasting 2.0 it changes the very architecture of, of the internet and um so i think maybe that that would that's maybe how it had some impact is that it, it is a similar, you know, a similar want to try and help people be more empowered and have more autonomy and be less disenfranchised um, through giving them better, better tool set, I suppose. Yeah, exactly. Right. And that is true for Bitcoin on the macro scale, but, but also, as you were saying, on the micro scale, right? If, if a developer is stuck on some problem that seems insurmountable to him, Right? but someone else has already figured this out years ago and it's trivial for him now. Well, you know, if they don't cooperate, then they're stuck and don't move forward. Yet, you know, if the advanced guy helps out the, the uh, newer guy, then they can move on to other projects, right? And solve future problems. Uh, and that, well, reduces the wasted potential, right? It actually manifests that potential uh, into reality. Yeah, I mean, I guess that is, you know, that's, that's free and open source software, isn't it? There was that move from just free software to becoming open source, free and open, free and open source uh, with Git, um, that, you know, you not only do you improve the software, but you, you comment on how you've improved that software and you educate other people on what you've done and you make it easy so other people can kind of, you know, see how that software has progressed and changed um, uh, rather than people having to just kind of, you know, read through uh, loads of software without really understanding what's going on and when it happened and when the updates happened they can look through a git repo um which i do think should be taught more in schools uh, using git because i think it's, it's a massive efficiency boost for for everything 
Yeah, Git, Git is a powerful tool, right? And it looks very, very scary at first. Uh, even though we have GitHub now, right? Nice graphical user interfaces for it. Mm. I'm, I don't even want to look past uh, before that time, how it was when uh, Git was even more confusing and you sent Git diffs over email. <laughs> uh, but yeah, nowadays, uh, still tricky to use, but once you get a hang of it, yeah, incredibly powerful, even I really for non-developers. Yeah, I mean, I, rec I recommend... Uh something like git kraken um uh, i mean that's a proprietary piece of software actually it's like a, a, a yearly subscription i think it's like 30 quid a year or something but it's i, I use it it's great for you know being able to see the different branches and forks there's some free um uh, free and open source versions for managing a git repo uh as well um i think you can use i can't i think there's you know git has has there's, there's, there's a very popular free and open source one i can't remember the name of now but i, I use git crack because i like the, i like the look of it i like the feel of it and it actually makes it all very easy when you have something graphical you can look at uh, but like you say like you know obviously if you're a bit more og and a bit more competent you'll just use the command line for your, your checking out and your hard resetting and your rebasing and your merging whatever else but um for us plebs we can use these graphical user interfaces but my my partner she's writing a, a big um academic study and uh i got her into using git git for version management um and then also just as a way of you know backing up her her study and uh she's found it invaluable it's super useful um and uh she sort of wished that it was pitched you know, taught to her much earlier on for, for just managing her own, her own work and her own projects um, and that's very much the way I feel about it. You know, it's just the, the idea of being able to push, pull, and then collaborate with people, having different, um, you know, a local and then a, a, a different, a different repositories, which is your, your origin repo repository. Uh, it's, it's yeah, it's just super useful. It's it's funny because when you think of Linux Torvalds, you think of Linux, obviously, uh, but actually the 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 thing which flipping changed the world was Git. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah, the original blockchain. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, exactly. Maybe Bitcoin is just a side chain of, uh, <laughs> of Git. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you're also one part that you've done uh, quite a lot with is educating, right? And making videos and podcasts at the World Crypto Network. Mm. Uh, and what was some of the focus that you had there? And again, why did you actually, you know, make these videos? Again, it sort of annoyed me that, you know, there's this really cheap hardware and then people are kind of like over engineering though you know people are making sweet machines with a full node in using raspberry pi um whereas you know a, a, a sweet machine should be like a secondary device it shouldn't be the main device you know you should, your node should be somewhere pretty safe where someone can't pick up or pick it up and walk off with it um and then you should have all these little devices communicating with that node uh, it's also that you know those those Andreas talks wasn't they quite a, not not a few years ago where you talk about the Internet of Things sending you know, all these devices sending value to one another um, and then with Lightning Network obviously we we have the ability to send these microtransactions and have more of a, a money streaming scenario um, and with IoT stuff microcontrollers uh, being so limited you know you, if, if you're running a microcontroller and getting it to do some things then you know you're not running an entire OS you lose a lot of the um, the vulnerabilities you would have if you're running everything on a, a small computer like a Raspberry Pi, um, you can just focus on, you know, getting a, a lightning invoice from a node, checking if it's been paid, if it's been paid, turning something on. Uh, and they're cheap as well. So I would, I'd be pretty happy how all that's gone. There's, there's a couple of Telegram groups for doing DIY um, uh, uh, hardware stuff. And then there's a whole bunch of hardware projects. Um, I've seen evolve and whether I impacted them directly or indirectly or or whether, you know, it's, we're all just building a, a bigger sort of maker community in, in, in Bitcoin. You know, it's, it's 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 great to see more and more people getting their hands dirty with uh, these IoT devices, uh, mostly as well, because, again, I think it was an Andreas uh, interview where he said that a, a future where, you know, these big corporations control your IoT devices is going to suck. But if we're empowered um then and we build our own devices then it could be quite brilliant it's that old hal philly quote isn't it of the the same thing which can be used to enslave us can be used to liberate us um but we've got to take control of it and then to be honest it's kind of pretty easy then because you, you just go on you look up i don't know a bunch of arduino projects on youtube and uh you just you know repurpose it for sending bitcoin payments um and suddenly it becomes much cooler <laughs> Because <laughs> you can send these microtransactions and have things happen, turn on, turn off, or whatever. 
Um, so yeah, it's been it's it's, it's been it's, it's definitely been exciting watching the hardware space grow. Yeah. So what is this Arduino? Why is it useful? So I mean, I don't really use Arduino so much, uh, but I mean, the Arduino. Um, I mean, that's that's just a there's an IDE, so there's a development um, environment where you can write in C. Um, and Arduino, they have this sort of hybrid C where it's got some extra little variable types, which which make things a little bit easier. So you don't have to define exactly what sort of string you're you know you're using. Um, but it's it's just a way of writing a little script in C and pulling in some libraries, which you can then upload to a microcontroller. Um, so like the microcontrollers I use, for example, and I'm still using the same microcontroller I used when I started a couple of years ago. It's uh, pre predominantly it's the um, ESP32, uh, which is a very, very popular microcontroller. It's super cheap. You know, the base microcontroller without any development things to make it easy, just the little, you know, the little square, what you would expect to see, like a square microprocessor, like a little microcontroller. They're only a pound each. Um, and then if you want a micro an ESP32 development board, you're talking like three three pounds, you know. And then if you want it, you know, packaged in a nice little fancy box, um, so you can start using it as a hardware wallet, um, then you're talking like ten pounds, you know, twenty pounds. So it's all really cheap. Um the one of the projects I did uh was using something called the well, it's using an SP32 to make a very cheap point of sale terminal. So after the sweet machine, um, and I was able to get a QR code and invoice to display on a, a little display attached to this microcontroller. I realized that I could plug in a keypad and then you could input some numbers. And then when it goes and requests the invoice, it also requests it with an amount. So it can then bring back the amount that you plugged in. So there's your point of sale terminal. And I was able to get the price of the, the hardware down to like, I think about $8. Um, but it was kind of fiddly to put together. Uh, but there's a company called M5 Stack and they do these really nice prefabbed little boxes with the microcontroller in a screen a couple of buttons and it's just a nice little unit and um they brought out one which is kind of like um has a keypad attached to it and uh you can actually change the keypad so it could be a you know a, a game boy keypad or it could be a like a calculator keypad so i use the calculator keypad to create a point of sale and it's super it worked you know like it we trialed it in room 77 in berlin and it did some pretty good um uh you know it was there for a while and it didn't break it continued to work uh and it was, it was useful um and and easy to use so yeah it's uh and then later on uh well you know i think it was justin moon he then did the the bit boy with one of these devices and it's like you know 30 30 40 dollar bit of hardware he made a um a hardware wallet uh, but you had to input the seed, I think, every time you use it. But it's still, you know, it's a static hardware wallet. It's cool. Um, and uh, then Stepan Snigarev of Spectre, he released his MicroPython library. No, wait there. Because I don't use MicroPython. It's the C library, isn't it? So he released, what's not, so it's not Mbits, a Python library he made for doing Bitcoin stuff, like a slimmed down Python library, which is super cool. And you can also use it for MicroPython on these controllers. Uh, but then he also, ah, Ubitcoin, that's it, sorry. I was trying to remember the name of the library. Uh, Stepan also released Ubitcoin, um, which is a, a library written in C, super slimmed down. But you can do, you know, everything, all the functions you need to do to be able to make a hardware wallet. You can sign a PSBT. You can generate a seed. You can generate addresses. Um so now, you know, you can put that library and then do some GUI stuff and then suddenly you've got a hardware wallet. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you're ducking out of those supply chain attacks and uh, you're making some cheap hardware wallet, which can hopefully bring down the price of other hardware wallets. So, yeah, it's all very powerful uh, stuff, these microcontrollers. And amazingly, the, the same microcontroller I was using a couple of years ago is still relevant. Um, I'm kind of waiting for the, the next big, I don't know, well-used micro controller to come out uh which is, is has the same price point of just a couple of dollars yeah that's incredibly cheap and very power or powerful enough to be very very useful <laughs> let's put it like this yeah it's great as technology plots on as well so the one of the recent projects i've been working on is um so i did a little hardware wallet called the bowser wallet uh and that was it was like a it had a, a tetris game and then if you pressed a button um, so it's Tetris game on this little device, this little M5 stack. And then if you pressed a button, it would then, you know, there'd be a hidden hardware wallet behind the Tetris game. 
while I'm bringing out the new version of that, which is like a, it's using, it's called the M5 stick. So it's a smaller um, uh, device and they're about, the, for the cheap one, it's about $15. And uh, it's great. It's got a little screen. It's got a couple of buttons on it. This one, you get a little game of Flappy Birds. But if you uh, plug it in and, uh, you know, launch the, the so there's like a, a web portal, you launch the web portal. It gives you the same experience as a Trezor. It throws up one of those scrambled keypads, and then you have to look at the device to get the, you know, the keypad. And then you input um, your PIN, and then it opens up a hardware wallet, you know, or, or you can, you know, start a new hardware wallet and you'll build the seed and go through the seed process on the device and you can write it down and then input the pin. And then, then the, 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 this browser software then switches to, you know, what you'd imagine a, a hardware wallet software, um, uh, just like you would have with the Trezor, you know, where you can, uh, you know, look at addresses and you get a balance, um, and that's in fact where I was going to use the, the Bitcoin JS um, function to be able to create your own PSBT. Uh, it was Vlad Stan of um, Bitcoin Tech. Big shout out to him. Amazing work. He just like, oh, it was incredible. I asked him just for this simple function in Bitcoin JS. And then he got back to me and he's like, oh, yeah, I've implemented it into the, the repo for uh, Bowser wallets. It's, it's basically all implemented, like the everything, you know, so good. Like, <laughs> it's going, going be, beyond. That, you know just a favor and he didn't claim the bounty as well he said no this one's on me you know it's, it's i think it's a cool project um so i'm going to send him a couple of these little hardware wallets and hopefully he'll play around with them uh but yeah i mean so that so that was made possible by something called web serial so now basically a web browser can do serial communication through a wire um it's only chromium so it's a google thing so it's chromium and, and chrome which which enable this currently uh, but it will become, you know, as, as time wears on, like a standard and a useful thing for, and other browsers will will implement as well. Um, uh, but yeah, you can you can send uh, data through the serial through the wire. So you plug your hardware wallet into your computer and then have your browser send information to it. It's pretty cool. Um, uh, so yeah, so it's, it's it's just as time wears on, more things become possible. <laughs> Yeah, that's super interesting. So what about the software side here? What you open the browser, but what website do you type in? Well, so this is you run it yourself. It's um it's a really simple bit of, you know, HTML JavaScript really. And um uh you can easily run it yourself. Um or if you want, you can go to, you know, I think I was gonna run it on I was I need to make so with GitHub, if you make um a project and organization, uh you can then run uh, a web page for it so i was just going to run it through github um and then you can see exactly you know literally by going to the 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 the, the repo exactly what's running um on that page and then you can, if you want you can clone it and you can run it on your own computer as well um so i like that you know i like being able to, to run and it, that means you could also run it offline as well um if you wanted to yeah, I see. That's fascinating. And so, so there are a couple of things here that makes Bowser Wallet unique. And right? for for one, easy do it yourself hardware and software. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but then also this kind of obfuscation fact that when you at first look at it, it's just a small gaming console that looks super geeky, right? And pr probably nobody would blink an eye and think that there are some precious private keys hidden on here, or yeah. even that the device can be used to actually sign with those private keys, right? But then walk us a bit more through the like actual key generation, key storage, and key usage. Well, this is yeah. I was, just, I was just about to say. I mean, it has its limitations. You know, you're using a piece of hardware here which has no security module. Um, so if someone knew what they were doing, they could take that piece of hardware and then they could read off. Um, uh, they could read off your, you know, your 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 seed. No, your seed. Your private key. Um, it's kind of. It would be akin to say if you had a paper wallet you know like a cold storage paper wallet rather than you have to take that cold storage paper wallet and then spin up something like tails os um uh, and then transfer the key across so you can sign some transaction you can sign the transaction directly on this device um so that's that's one huge limitation for me it's that thing again i want a cheap hardware wallet you know i i, I had a builder working for me and he wanted to be paid in bitcoin 
So um, I said, buy a hardware wallet. And he's like, yeah, they're a bit expensive. And I'm like, God damn it. I want to be able to give this dude a hardware wallet, which is, you know, works and is, is has like a nice GUI and stuff. And I want to be able to, to give him like, you know, I want it to be cheap, like really cheap, like cheap enough that I can just give it to him. Um, I know that goes against all the advice, which was Bitcoin is, you know, <laughs> say to people that you shouldn't accept such gifts from people. But, you know, for, for, for an amount up until a few thousand pounds or dollars or something, I think it would be fine. And, uh, so for LM Bits, for example, I want a cafe. I want to be able to go into a cafe and I want to be able to say, look, use this piece of software and accept lightning transactions for your coffees. And then when the amount in the wallet gets to a certain amount, like $100, it will use some other extension, which doesn't exist yet, but hopefully will one day, to loop out to an on-chain address. That on-chain address is on this little hardware wallet, which I'm going to give you. It's like 10 pounds, you know, take it, whatever. So now... Because I find a lot of people who have these cafes and bars and they want to accept Bitcoin, they want to just build up a little stash. And then at some point in the future, they'll want to access that stash and send it to some exchange, probably to turn it back into fear. That's probably what they want to do. Um, uh, or maybe they just want to keep it as a, you know, as a, as a, a, um, a hedge against the you know, economies collapsing, whatever else. Uh, so this is just a way to be able to go, you know, to lots of different cafes, bars, whatever, and say, here, here's, here's, here's a piece of software which you can accept. Bitcoin transactions on here's a piece of hardware which you can um uh, manage your your private key on so you don't have to have it on a piece of paper on a computer or on on your on your phone or you don't have to have this expensive hardware wallet because uh, you're not going to do huge amount of transactions um so this is something i can give you know i can just give to you uh and then hopefully then over time you know they'll end up running their own LM bits on their own node and you know they'll have a maybe a multi-sig thing going on so this is in fact where seed signer do a great job of this um which is another sort of hardware wallet project um where they use raspberry pi zero uh, so they they focus entirely on multi-sig and they, the concept is if you have these hardware wallets you know like your trezor or your ledger or whatever the the huge um uh, attack vector is the supply chain attack you know this factory which are making these things they know they're going to become bitcoin hardware wallets and yes, they test and, and also hardware wallets, which most likely will have like a, a decent amount of money on, you know, um, it's rare that somebody's going to spend you know, $80 on a hardware wallet and not and, and put, you know, $100 on it. They're most likely going to put a few thousand dollars or a few hundred thousands of dollars on there. So um, you know, I don't want to spread FUD, but we need to be aware that, you know, these factories which are making these hardware wallets, yes, you know, on the production line, they'll pull off, you know, every other. 50 or 100 or whatever to, to test it to make sure it's legit and nothing's been added to the hardware um and they'll have some but there's, there's always ways of hacking these things and the factory which is making these things knows they're going to be bitcoin hardware wallets. so that kind of scares me so i think c signer do a great job of, of using it for multi-sig um so then you have something you know off the shelf which isn't subject to hardware attacks uh um you know it's something which isn't going to be built into a raspberry pi zero because the likelihood of your raspberry pi zero which is being sold on a, sh on a shelf somewhere then being used for some bitcoin thing is is very slim um so i think that's probably security wise i mean i you know i think that's probably only really necessary if you're you know have a great deal of funds like having a multi-sig with a, a hardware wallet and then a, a off-the-shelf hardware wallet but i think that's a really secure uh, model um, and I would like to do a multi-sig uh, with the, the the Bowser wallet at some point. But for now, you know, I'm just sort of dicking about playing around with the PSBTs and, and storing, you know, a few thousand pounds, dollars worth of funds on there and just having like something cheap you can give to somebody where they can just manage a small amount of funds. Yeah, that's that's a really good rationale. And I especially like that view that this is basically an upgrade from paper to hardware right? yeah. <laughs> and the cheapest upgrade that you could make. Sure, right? Whoever has the paper can read it. And sure, whoever has access to the hardware can use it. Right. Yeah. But um, the nice thing is, is that you can spend. So when you have a paper wallet, right, and you wrote down your 12 recovery words, that's a hier hierarchical deterministic wallet, right? So there are a bunch of private keys on there. And there are potentially a bunch of different coins that have an amount of sets to them as well. And now if you want to spend uh, those things, you have to type in all 12 words. And therefore, the software that you're using gets access to all of the private keys, right? And can, could theoretically spend the entire stash that you have there, even though you only want to spend a little bit, 
And yeah. so you have to trust, for example, your laptop or your phone or something uh, to not do that, right? And this is another great upgrade here of the Bowser wallet that you don't have to import your private keys to a new computer. No. Well, because they already are on a computer. It's a stupid computer, right? A very small one, not connected to the internet and all the good things. Um, and now you can here selectively sign a actual Bitcoin transaction that spends only a subset of your stash and no other computer will find about the private keys to spend the rest of it, uh, which is a, a huge upgrade too. No, the only yeah, the only thing which is sent um, is the 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 the, bow, the um, browser has the the XPub, uh, and it, you know it says the, the the wallet sends the browser the XPub um, in order for you to be able to generate the PSBT, and then also in order for you to just um, look at all the addresses uh, to see you know how, what, what funds, what UTXO sets are in where. Um, so yeah, the private key just remains on the device the whole time, and uh, yeah, and it's you know you you can restore that same seed and uh, pin, use it to to regenerate the wallet on another device like a Trezor or some um, online or, you know, some software wallet uh, if 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 you so wanted to if the hardware broke. Um, yeah, it's exactly so. It's 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 just one. I think security of bitcoins is a spectrum and you know on one side you've got like a huge multi-sig with all these different devices and you know great brilliant that's really secure fantastic but does everyone need that no you know most people probably sell for a trezor or a trezor's great you know they'll keep your bitcoin nice and secure um but then there are some scenarios where you know someone's using a very small amount and they're, they're only not playing around with a huge amount just like a few thousand dollars worth and uh like you say it's just it's a step up from them storing on a piece of paper and it's certainly a step up from them using it on a phone or or saving it on a on a computer or bloody hell an exchange um so yeah it's, it seems to be the spectrum of security and uh i think it's it's it adds another option um and then also it is if you're if you're fleeing some country uh and you want to take a device you can sign bitcoin on from any computer so you could go to a computer i was going to say in an internet cafe but we're not in the 90s uh you could you could find it in fact, <laughs> in fact you could use a phone you could you could theoretically um i don't know if web serial works on a phone i bet it does but it works on a phone you could uh you could plug in this hardware wallet and then um sign a transaction uh, a psbt complete a psbt on your hardware wallet uh from a phone or yeah any any computer uh, around the world, even if the computer had uh, viruses and stuff on it, um, and this little device doesn't look like a hardware wallet. You know, it looks like, like you say, it's like a little gaming device. So it has some use somewhere. Again, a massive caveat. I mean, the the, the new Bowser wallet I'm talking about hasn't even been finished yet. It's highly experimental. The old Bowser wallet um, is uh, is is you know, it's 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 just finally kind of come out of beta. Um, but it has those limitations, you know, if someone knows what they're doing, they could, they could pull that private key off there. Uh, it's a little bit harder than just, you know, taking a photo of that piece of paper if you're evil made. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's possible. Um, but I like the idea. I think the more people who play around with, um, and this is why Spectre have done such a great job, uh, cause you've got all these, all these people playing around with these DIY hardware solutions. Um, I don't know, you, you just start exploring alternatives and new ways of doing things uh and then more people maybe have access to things like multisig um and uh yeah it's just i think it's a, an area of, of bitcoin which needs to be explored further is just is the development of these diy hardware wallets and then also just like hardware wallet alternatives um and bringing the price of hardware wallets way down because they should be way cheaper than they are you know i mean th i think the only if a trezor was 10 pounds then I wouldn't be making this thing. I'd be like, okay, I'd give my builder a trestle. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Right. Um, so because there is no hardware secure element or module in this hardware, right, the, the data on it is rather open and public, right? But yeah. uh, can you then use a passphrase to encrypt the secret keys? Uh, at least oh, yeah, yeah, it's, right? yeah, it's encrypted. Yeah, yeah, it's encrepted. The passphrase is encrypted. It, uses, it, it defaults, you have to use a passphrase. Um, so it's all encrypted, yeah, using your passphrase. And, and so that's and, a regular, and, what is it, the 39 passphrase? Yeah, yeah. So that's, um, oh. uh, yeah, and that doesn't go any, it never goes to the, uh, it's a hash which is sent. 
Is that hash which is sent? Yeah, it's a hash which is sent in the passphrase. Um, so it's so, not and, stored. Yeah, and, and where do you type it in though? You type, well, this is what you type it, you, you click it in on your, on your browser, but the, so basically the, your, your browser sends, um, has a keypad with, uh, you know, nine buttons and each button is starred out. Okay. Um, so then the buttons are like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. But they're starred out. Then you look on the device and there's a scrambled keypad on the device. Okay. So, you know, it's one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, except all the numbers are scrambled. So, you know, one might be where nine is and six might be where seven is, whatever. Yeah. So you click on the browser, your pin, um, your, your eight digit pin could be better, you know, but you click on the browser, your, 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 um, eight digit pin, and then it sends an array, uh, to the, um, the device, the hardware device, um, of, so it's like, okay, he selected number two, he selected number four, he selected number five, and then using the number generated on that, you know, in that array, which it just generates on the fly, isn't stored on the hardware device. It then, it says, it then is able to take that pin, which you've inputted and then take the hash and then use it to restore the thing. Uh, so it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. But I mean, okay, but this is, would so, be... so this is a pin that kind of unlocks the hardware, so to say. Yeah. 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 It okay. unlocks, but... it unlocks the, um, uh, you need it also for your, yeah, it, it unlocks your, your private key. So it's your private key is, yeah, it's using bit 39. So wait, but are there then two different things? No, because there's like, for example, Trezor has a pin, right? To unlock the hardware, but then you type in the passphrase, right? To decrypt the private keys on the device. So, so two different things. All right. Well, then this, is that's, the in same this case, case, this, this, in this case, this would be the same thing. Then. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. It's very and good because so it just uses, um, uh, the Bitcoin library functions. Um, which are, are very plain, simple. So I'm able to put in uh, the the pin, the passphrase, and then sorry, the passphrase, and then the um, the key, and I'm able to generate addresses. Then so the seed, mm -hmm. sorry, and then able to generate addresses. Yeah. So here you have basically a, a number a number passphrase. Yeah. So, so it's not it's not you could brute force it, I suppose, if you really wanted to. Um, well, depending on how long it is, no. Yeah, it's only eight digits, so you could brute force it pretty. I think this is why Trezor they switched, didn't they, to um, a bit more of a secure pin. But it, it's an example, you know, of look, we can do a thing. Uh, there's probably a way of making this more secure. I think, I think with Trezor, somebody told me they have like now a like you you click through, um, so so you can also have like um, uh, you know uh, letters as well as as well as numbers uh, in in your passphrase. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. That that would improve things too. What what this will also so as well as um, being able to use it on your Bowser wallet software, then uh, there's also a watch only extension in LM Bits where you'll be able to. So currently, you can just give it a um, master public key, and it will uh, you know an XPub. You can you can uh, derive addresses. Um, and then, uh, you know, look at those addresses using, uh, mempool.space, it defaults to mempool.space because it's a great project. And also because you can, a lot of these node, um, one click pieces of software, such as the Raspberry Blitz and Umbrel, it's very easy to spin up mempool.space, your own mempool.space. So you can, and also they also have LM bits on, so it kind of makes it pretty useful. Um, but yeah, there's a watch only extension for LM bits, which will add uh psbt support so you can build a psbt which you could then you know and then we'll also we'll also hopefully put in some web serial support so you could plug in a little bowser wallet or you could plug in something else i think yeah, i think um i need to look at the sort of standards of how other uh hardware wallets do it cold card that's a that's an air gap device isn't it but um maybe maybe, maybe like the, the standard the way trezor does it whether that can be done over web serial anyway it's Hopefully, we'll be able to have more than just the Bowser wallet, which you can send a PSBT to over the wire. Um, or you could, you know, put that PSBT, PSBT on a um, an SD card. Is that how cold, cold, cold cards an SD card, isn't it? Um, it does both. It does both. Oh, okay, there we are. Cool. Yeah, it, of course it um, does, because you have, on Electrum, you have the cold, yeah, you have the cold cord card standard. You just that, 
yeah. plug it in. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's what I used great. to use for we I use the same um JSON format if you save your cold card, the template for the, the original Bowser wallet in order mm -hmm. to be able to nice. get Electrum. Electrum because you use the original Bowser wallet you use with Electrum. Yeah, I, I I was about to ask that. Um so you you have the now the web interface, right? But mm. is Bowser hardware also compatible with HWI? Because if yes, then it would all of a sudden be compatible with many, many different Bitcoin software wallets. Yeah, so the, the original Bowser wallet was this one. I mean, this this one's limited because it's smaller. Um, so it doesn't have like an SD card slot. Uh, so I can't. Um, yeah, so so yeah, the, the, the original Bowser wallet used Electrum and was basically simulating, it was pretending to be a cold card. You know? That's very interesting. I wonder if it would work with Wasabi. That would be pretty sure. cool. Oh, of course, yeah, because Wasabi does um, hardware wallet stuff as well. Do you know, I find it, yeah. the hardest thing is just keeping up, like running <laughs> all the different software and all the different hardware. It's just, you know, particularly if you're making stuff is when you spend most of your time just like staring at a load of code, getting confused and hitting your head yeah. against a, a wall. <laughs> it's hard to find the time <laughs> to like run everything. Yeah, I, but I think if you could get your hardware compatible with the hardware wallet interface by Andrew Chow in the Bitcoin Core project, yeah. I think that would be the most uh, productive because then all of a sudden you're compatible with Wasabi, Electrum, Spectre, Trezor. It, it, it will be, it will Bitbox, be because right? it's, it's just me implementing it badly because it's um, Step and Snigraph's library, you Bitcoin. So it will be, it's what they use. Yeah. Well, they don't use that for Spectre, do they? Because it's no, maybe they do use that for Spectre. I think they do. Is it Spectre in C or is it in Py is it MicroPython library? Anyway, it will be because um, uh, Seven Snagrefs library is, you know, it's uh, Bitcoin Core C libraries just kind of like slimmed down and only the necessary bits. Um, so, yeah, it will be. Um, I need to, to be honest with the the little Bowser wallet, which is the one I'm doing now. As soon as I get it communicating properly over, because it communicates okay over serial, but it, it kind of can tap out every now and then, which is frustrating. You have to plug it in again. So as soon as I get past that annoying little bug, um, and then uh, I get it, you know, being able to general send the PSBT over the wire, which has to be done in chunks. It's kind of annoying, but uh, yeah, it can be send send the PSBT over the wire put back together on the hardware wallet signed, sent back in a way which is okay. Um, I'm going to plead with the rest of the Bitcoin community to for somebody to, to take control of the project and do something with it because it's, uh, um, it's, um, it's a lot of time which needs to be invested into it. And I haven't really got the time because of LM Bits stuff and other things I want to make. Uh, but I also want this thing to really exist. So I want to get it to the point where it's it will work. It's a little bit, temperamental but it'll work and it'll, it'll it's not going to have some horrible bug which means that you end up sending the money to the wrong place um uh but then i, I really want to kind of like hand over the reins to somebody else then maybe i'll see if like Stepan will take it and do something with it <laughs> so there you have it listeners if you're bored if you don't know how to contribute to bitcoin oh, uh, yeah. well apply yourself to maintain bowser wallet well i'm hoping this flat stand guy might might get this is why i'm, I'm sending him some of the um some of some of the hardware to try and like pique his prick his interest because he he's far more capable than me uh he's a brilliant developer um uh i'll see if i can find the name of his repo i think it's bitcoin cortec is the name of his repo uh he has a he has a website as well with um in fact he 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 runs the uh bitcoin js example gui where you can build a uh, partially signed Bitcoin transaction. Anyway, I'm hoping that I can, I can, I can get him hooked on it, and he'll realize his potential, and then he'll, he'll become the the lead maintainer of it. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know how. I don't know. Yeah, how likely that is because he seems like a busy dude. But yeah, hopefully, I can prick the interest of of, of someone uh, very capable. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. So yeah. the Bowser wallet seems very promising, but as you mentioned now a couple of times, you're also tinkering on Ellen Bits. Uh, so what is that lightning magic tool? So Ellen Bits is because I'm uh, I like making like little like you say little goofy projects. You know, I want to just send lightning in a to, to get it to do this. You know, to to, to uh, I don't know to to use it for a paywall or to use it for you know like. Um, uh, a ticketing system so you can you know write up a, a question and put in an email and then pay an amount based on the word count to email 
the question to somebody or I want to uh, have some sort of, you know, streamer service where you can put a QR code on the screen when you're doing video and then people pay it and then trigger like GIFs, you know, to animate on the screen, like, like say confetti or Bitcoins or whatever. Um, and uh, all these projects are basically like a wallet system with some goofy code on top interacting with that wallet um so if you think of like uh you know like a blog system like wordpress for example what makes that because we all know the software is terrible uh but what makes it good is you start with a simple blog you know you can write some thoughts down on a in a post and you can publish it but then you can extend it in all these different directions through its, its plugin system um and there's gazillions of plugins uh which are been made for wordpress even though actually building one of these plugins is pretty hard on wordpress there um because they're using like this weird antiquated python stuff uh, not python php um but it, it's successful because you you then extend that blog into any direction you want to extend it and so Bits is kind of like that it's a, just a bitcoin a lightning wallet um and account system so you can easily generate lots of little wallets um uh, and they've all got their own API details. So they've all got their all got their own keys. So you can have, you know, like we're still. So this is what was frustrating, and I was bugging lots of different companies for a long time to implement the ability to have multiple accounts in a Lightning uh, wallet. So if you have like a Lightning wallet, like I want, I want, I, you know, like on a node, for example, I don't want to like expose my if I'm building something, which needs to be able to spend funds. I don't want to have to give that thing my admin macaroon, and then it can access all the funds on my node. Um, I don't want to be able to give that thing my, you know, my in my admin key on open node or some custodial service and it still has access to all my funds. So I want to be able to separate that my uh into my you know, I want to be able to use a piece of software to 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 have lots of little wallets. So, you know, my little ATM, which can spend funds, it can only spend up to however many funds I put in that wallet. Um, and then it's got its own admin admin key. So that was kind of a core concept. Was it make it a piece of software where it's very easy to make lots of little uh, wallets um and then there was also this idea of having extendable through extensions so if you have if you want to you know um i don't know if you have a shop like you want to sell stuff in your local marketplace then you know you have like an offline shop extension where you have like a qr code people can pay sats to um and you, you don't even need to be online as long as they're online they can you know they can verify with a using a like a seed um you can give you a word and then you know that word means that they've paid your node and yeah uh, or there's a whole bunch of things you could do on that I, 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 but um or maybe you want to you know write have uh, have, have uh, paywalls or maybe you want to um do you know what? i can't let me let me actually look at the different extensions we've got going on at the moment um uh yes where are you looking kits. where can I'm actually, I'm actually so you can yeah if you go on so we have lmbits.com but I warn you, we tend to break it a lot because we mess around with it. Because that's kind of our playground where we play around with the software. So it's incredible. So don't use it as a stable service. You can go there and if it's working, you can check stuff out. One day, because uh, currently it's just you know me, a couple of other developers running lmbits.com. And we have a lot of traffic. Um, uh, and we have a lot of people trying to put funds on there. So I'm actually quite happy with it. You know, when we... We, we anything we're working on even if we ha you know haven't pushed it to master we'll start putting on lmbits.com uh or so the other core uh, idea behind lmbits is to standardize all these different so when i was doing my sorry when i was making my point of sale terminal um, my other my sweet machine for example uh you know i would have to make like an lnd version then i'd have to make a c lightning version then i would have to make a open node version then i'd have to make an lmp version and that was just really frustrating so i was like okay i want something which can sit on top of any funding source so we do all that hard work we have a bunch of like wallet bridges uh which connect to these funding sources so when you run lm bits you can run it on top of anything you know if you run it yourself you can run it on you know on top of any any lightning funding source um and that gives you a standard api then so when i develop my point of sale i can just make it compatible with lm bits and it's like well you know if someone's running l and d they can run lm bits and they can have this point of sale or if they're lightning d they can just run l and bits and they can have this point of sale it makes it a lot easier to develop on um but because of that, because we have all these funding sources and occasionally these funding sources change the way they do things, you know, you'll you'll have one of the funding sources uh, stops generating invoices. So then you'll need to go in and check it. So on lmbits.com, we're often changing the funding sources. We're often 
you know, uploading new um, uh, back end code and, and stuff, which we think may, might make the whole thing more efficient, but then, you know, inevitably might break it and have bugs. Uh, so yeah, go on alanbits.com and if it's up, play with it, but please don't f- put funds on there. Um, we encourage you not to, which is why we, we break it often. Uh, one day it may become a stable service, but while it's just uh, me and a couple of other people managing it, it's going to be remain uh, a horribly unstable service. But run Allen Bits uh, yourself um, on your node. Uh, go to the repo. We have really clear instructions on how to run it. I've done a bunch of uh, YouTube tutorials on how to spin up your own Allen Bits um, on your own computer or on a very cheap VPS. I've even got like a tutorial I did where I, you know, Spin, spun up a VPS anonymously, and then I got a um, uh, a URL anonymously, and I was able to spin up an Allen Bits. So, you know, you don't have to give up your personal data to make one of these things, and then you can just connect it to any any funding source you like. So, currently, we have on there. I'll go through all the extensions very very quickly. We have um, a bunch of LN URL, LN URL extensions. So, to make an LN URL pay, that's basically a static QR code where you can scan it and send funds to it um uh with your wallet your wallet does a whole bunch of like communication stuff like it you know um it requests an invoice and then the server then sends an invoice to your wallet and then you say if you want to send the funds or not click okay and then when you say yes then it pays the invoice that's how basically how lnurl pay works and then lnurlw kind of does that the other way around so the server you scan it and the server um says generate me an invoice and pass it to me and then your wallet generates an invoice passes it to them and then the server then pays that invoice so for the user you scan a qr code and then boom you get funds appear magically in your wallet you know so that's lnurlw so lnurl pay and lnurlw two extensions we have to my mind they're the easiest way to min- make your own lnurls we also have uh, tpos which is a great extension and that's just to make a very simple point of sale terminal which you can share on a and it runs really nicely on a phone just looks like a calculator. You input an amount in fiat and then press OK and it generates an invoice. The idea is, the concept is behind it. You give it to your bar staff, your cafe, people working in your cafe, whatever, and they can easily generate, you know, take lightning payments, Bitcoin payments over lightning. Um, uh, and they can share this this piece of software amongst themselves, but they have absolutely, it's completely air gapped from your wallet. They can't see how many how much funds you've got. It's completely, you know, they have, they can't do anything. All they can do is generate invoices just within this, uh, point of sales so that's pretty cool subdomains that's where you say if you've got a domain name um you can link it to your cloudflare account and then through the cloudflare api people can pay to buy a subdomain off you so you could sell subdomains for a day or a week you know um, that's kind of useful but i don't know what the implications are for people that are running, then running drug markets on your domain <laughs> so i would i would if you're if you're selling subdomains i would i would sell them to people you trust um there's an events uh, plugin extension, which is uh, say if you're running a Bitcoin event and you want people to pay for it, um, you can very easily just send out, a, you know, say how many people can attend, and then you send out a, a form, a sign up form. People sign up, they pay an invoice, they get a ticket, a QR, a, a ticket, and then when they come to the event, they show you the ticket, and then you can register it, and you can do all, all that through the extension. Um, LND Hub. That means you can connect your LNBits wallet to Blue Wallet, so you can actually manage it from Blue Wallet. Blasco Map. You know all about Blasco Map Max, don't you? This is a very simple way Beautiful. to generate to generate the config files, um, so you can have an LN Bits wallet uh, manage your Blasco Map ATM support tickets. That's the one I told you about before, where you you know input some texts, put in an email, and then you pay per word, pay an invoice, and then you know that sends that tickets support ticket to somebody. That, by the way, is is really nice and compatible with. Um, Oh, Discord. So you can use a disc. So it has, it has web hooks and you can put a Discord web hook in there. So when someone asks a question using the support tickets thing, it will then pop that question up in a Discord chat. Um, watch only, which is just for using, you know, uh, managing your um, uh, master public key. Paywall for making paywalls. DJ live stream. That's the thing I said about before. Um, uh, Sats pay server. <laughs> it's a bit tongue in cheek. It's a bit like BTC pay server in that you can generate a charge, give that charge to somebody and they can pay it. And then working in collaboration with the watch only extension, um, it can do on-chain as well as um, as well as well Lightning. Offline shop, that's kind of the thing I, I said before where you have an, uh, an LNURL pay uh, QR code, people can scan it, they can pay you. And then when they pay, when 
they get receipts of payments. When they paid you, they get um, a, a word and then you have a list of words and then they say, okay, you know, gorilla. And you're like, okay, yeah, gorilla is the next word on my list. And then the, the next word on the list after that might be, I don't know, table. And then so the next person who pays, they'll, they'll say, okay, on my wallet and now says table. And then you're like, okay, yep, table's the next word on our list. So you can verify that payments be made. All you need is a QR code then you can, you know, sell. Uh, so the idea is it's for like a market stall or something, you know, somewhere where they might not have um, uh, internet access. User manager, that's for, you know, making wallets and user accounts uh, through the API. Um, very powerful. You know, you can use it to, you could put LM bits then as part of your stack if you're building some sort of, you know, lightning solution, which needs accounts and wallets and things. And then Capture, I haven't really played with Capture, but it's, uh, it's um, it got merged. So, you know, I'm sure the other developer liked it, but it's uh, to generate a Capture to stop spam, you know, instead of having to do, you know, Click on pictures of cars on one of those things. You can just scan a QR code and, and pay some sats. Um, and then, so it's, I suppose it's kind of like a paywall, really. Uh, so, yeah, so that's what we've got so far. Um, but then also we have the split payments one, which is the most recent one. Split payments is really powerful, I think, in that um, uh, you can take a wallet and then any money which comes into that wallet, you can then tell it to split percentage-wise across a whole bunch of wallets. So... Um, you could use it, for example, if you have sales persons selling something, they could receive their commission at the point of sale, and then they could literally look at their wallet and see the funds going into their wallet, and that's their, you know, that's their wages. Or you could have it for like a joint venture, like a, I know, people selling coffee or whatever. Um, you could or pre-decide like who gets how, what, what a percentage, and what percentage should be for rent materials, and then uh, with every payment, then everybody can see on their in their wallets they're getting you know money streaming into it. Um, and then I'm working on the Spotify jukebox. This just connects to the Spotify API. So somebody can, with anyone with a Spotify account, say if you've got a bar, you can plug your phone into the speaker. And then through this AP, this Spotify jukebox extension makes like a, a web GUI for somebody. So you say what playlist people can have access to. And then people can go to one of those playlists and they can play a song. Um, they have to pay. You know, they get an invoice, they pay the invoice. When they pay the invoice, then it plays a song on the device you've linked up to it, so your phone. Um, so you can really easily, like, have a jukebox then, uh, which I think is a really nice sort of passive income for a bar or cafe owner. Um, uh, and the funny thing is about these sats, you know, when they, they start coming in and when you start stacking them, they, they, they accumulate quite quickly. Like, you think, oh, it's only 100 sats someone's paying per song. Uh, but... I don't know. I just noticed. Well, I suppose it just it can accumulate quite quickly if you've got a busy bar, if you're running a, a Bitcoin meet up there or something. Everyone's playing songs on your thing. So yeah. So that's what we got so far. But there's plenty more in the pipeline, and there's we encourage people. We're trying to do more documentation on how other people can contribute and build their own extensions, because uh, each extension is its own self-contained thing, and quite often for a lot of functions you could just copy and paste the code from other extensions for functions you need uh so we want to do more outreach educational it's all written in python the back end and the front end is like html and javascript so it's pretty simple it's pretty straightforward um uh so we want to do more educational stuff so people can you know easily build their own extensions so that's my uh ellen bits shill and breakdown of all the extensions we currently have that was a pretty solid shill i must was it okay say. damn <laughs> No, seriously, man. This is this has gotten incredibly feature rich. Yeah, it's loads. Yeah. Wow. But we have... and it actually works. Yeah, they. I mean, well, we're still in beta. We keep it in beta, you know, <laughs> because uh, because we can because we don't care. Um, hopefully, soon we'll be out of beta. They all work. All the extensions work. Um, we get the occasional, you know, little bug pop up, um, uh, which we need to need to squish. But we. Yeah, it, they 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 all work. Um, the only th the only time it becomes trickier. So we're we're running lmbits.com at scale. Um, so we had like, so for example, instead of all of our extensions polling to see whether invoices are being paid, we had these listeners listening to see whether an invoice is going into a wallet, and then if it is going into a wallet, then you know, or checking to see if an invoice has been paid. Um, uh, and then we found that uh, if lots of people, so we, 
there was one extension where you could like make a gazillion invoices really easily um, just by doing, you know, by, by just doing an API request. Uh, but that meant, so we got attacked basically. Somebody just made like gazillions of invoices, didn't pay them. And then LM Bits would then try and track, um, try and uh, check this gazillion invoices. And uh, it would just confuse, you know, it just, it just run out of memory. Like the memory would just fly off, you know, it, it, it'd break it. Um, so, but that's good. It's like, it's like um, the anti-fragile thing, you know, running lmbits.com means we, as much of a pain in the ass as it is. And, you know, uh, like once every couple of weeks, you have to go in and fix something. Uh, it, it, it means that we're fixing those bugs for other people. So if they run it themselves and then eventually when it's hard enough and when it's anti-fragile enough and when actually works without having to kind of keep an eye on it then we'll take out beta um currently that milestone is not that close because uh there's not you know there's what like three of us working on it fairly full time um so there has been we have been floating this idea of lmbits.com being used like some sort of proprietary arm to then inform the lmbits uh, community software um but none of us can be bothered with all the corporate crap which comes along with that so uh we're, we're trying to wait we're trying to design lmbits.com so when it is running and when it's a little bit more stable that we'll be able to pull in enough revenue to be able to employ maybe a couple of people to work on it full time the actual dot com um but then the all the stuff they do then will then obviously then informs the software which anyone can run the free and open source software so it's exciting it's exciting times um uh and i think more and more people you know they see it on their nodes their umbrellas and their blitzes and they they enable some extension and suddenly they've got access to some great tool which they can play around with yeah this is this is really solid um and so again this there is basically one user, the admin user, who has full control over everything, right? He has full control over all the wallets, uh, as well as over the funding source, or that's rather a question. Does the admin of Ellen Bits always and necessarily have full control over the funding source? So yeah, that's a good question, because we've been talking more and more about like, so obviously, if you're running an Ellen Bits, um, and then uh, you're running it for you know your bar, uh, and you're giving customers when they do is like SaaS back. You know, do you want your change? Okay, do you want it SaaS? Well, you know, here's a wallet. Boom, and you can use the wallet on your phone. You need to install any software. You can that's use it directly on your too. phone. Yeah, that's, that's fun. genius onboarding, man. That's great. Yeah, but you can. Oh man. Oh Jesus. No, I was I was going to show you. I was going to tell you. <laughs> I almost I almost let slip then something which I really want to talk about, but I can't because. Yeah, but but there's some there's some cool extensions coming out soon, um, particularly for onboarding. Uh, but but oh, I can't tell you. I'll, I'll get murdered by everyone oh, else involved in the project. Oh Jesus, it is a tease. Anyway, but yeah, but on on that topic of onboarding, but yeah, there's there's so yeah, you can you can the the bar then just is is a custodian essentially for 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 those um, customers uh, or for the, the, the bar staff who are, you're using payment splitting for to give them. So their tips or some, I don't know, you could have a QR code on a table and people could just tip and it'll go straight to the bar staff. Um, uh, so it's like micro custod custodianship almost because you're, 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 and everyone has the ability to be a custodian. So I could be a custodian for my family. So I could give my kids wallets with funds on, for example. So it's kind of interesting concept in a way. Uh, but, uh, in order for them to run them for them for them to have to run it themselves and in a way which is like censorship resistant, you know, in a Bitcoin -y way, they would need to run a node and then they would need to run the software on top of that node. However, there's there's no real reason why somebody couldn't connect their node through the software being run elsewhere. So say LMBit, on lmbits.com, you could put in your node credentials, it could be stored locally on your machine. So no credentials are sent to the server. And then um, you could then just use it, you know, almost like a, uh, like a, a proxy, which could have some like privacy enhancements to some ben privacy benefits as well. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're sort of figuring that out, but it's, it's entirely plausible. And again, it's just a case of there's only a few of us working on it. And uh, we have like you know, bugs to squish and 
we get all docked out about new ideas for extensions. So, uh, I mean, look, we haven't even got like a login system yet. It's funnily enough, we haven't really needed it, but you know, it would be nice for some sort of legacy username, password login system. So people could secure their accounts in a way which they're familiar with. Um, cause currently it's a case that they just have to bookmark the page, which their, uh, their wallets on, cause it's all in the URL. Um, uh, but you know, obviously we'll have a login system, but we still, we still haven't built that yet. Uh, we still haven't built, you know, like an admin extension. So the admin of the Allen bits install should really have an extension where they can change like the colors, like stuff you can do in the back end now, but, um, or, you know, they can plug it into a different funding source. Um, uh, that, that should all be accessible through a GUI. We still haven't got that, you know, we still need to build that. So yeah, contributors very welcome. <laughs> But it's, it's certainly an exciting project to work on just because it's like, well, like, you know, every now and then you just get a random new dead useful fun function, uh, which you can, you know, play around with and, 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 and come up with uh, um, uh, proof of concepts for, for different ideas or business ideas, um, such as the split payments thing. I'm super excited about the split payments thing. I went out in the wild working. Yeah, and I mean, sure, it's it's still a small and young project, but hey, uh, you already got uh, over twenty five people uh, on GitHub uh, contributing, and that's you know not too shabby at all. Uh, so well done on actually fostering a small scale community already, and I mean the results show it's amazing, and hopefully with more contributors, uh, even more extensions in the future. That's very bullish. Yeah, I think that I think that we need to do something with the dot com. I don't, I can't. We need to get so we need to have some way for that to enable people to work on LM bits full time or, or, or create bounties, um, uh, to tackle, you know, like a, a pot for bounties. We need some sort of revenue coming in on LMBits.com, which then helps build the, the free and open source, like the free and open source stuff will get done. It just take time, you know, while we're all just sort of volunteering. So it'd be nice to kind of figure out a way of doing that. Um, uh, but yeah, it's, it's cool, man. I'm really enjoying it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, you know, one one of the nice potential funding sources that you could think about, uh, and it might also be an extension to Ellen Bits, of course, uh, it's basically a, you know, a crowdfunding page with different perks, where each of these perks stands for a certain feature in the software. Like, for example, uh, you know, um, add the split payments and whoever as a user wants to see the split payments done faster can uh, contribute some amount of sats here and you as the main uh like contributors to the project will see then what is the actual demand for the users what are they interested in right and of course you will also have the sats uh to spend on paying the people to get it done that's a great idea fear jaff actually has so create jaff is 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 you know one of the lead maintainers of um alan bits and he's created some of the the the, the, the coolest extensions on there such as the offline shop extension um, and the, the DJ stream extension and the LND hub one. Um, so he's, he's very active uh, on LM bits. He's not so much at the moment because he's busy. He has like a, you know, in his working life, he's been very busy. Um, but yeah, he's, 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 yeah, he's, he's very, he's been very active and uh, he's, he's also a genius. So it's great. It's good to have one of those on your team. Uh, but he actually has that exact same thing you talked about then. So it's like not prediction markets, but like a, a thing where you can put in feature requests and then people pay to boost that that you know feature up the list of priorities um i think maybe this is why he this this software appealed to him alan bits appealed to him because he's he's doing he's always making these little projects you know for 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 these little useful utilities for people um uh, but obviously you know they're all free and open source but to run them yourself, you would have to like go and get this repo and then install this and go and get that repo and install this. Whereas in LM bits, it's like, you've just got to do that once and then you enable it. Um, or on a, a node like Umbrel or Blitz, you could, or my node, you can just like, you know, install LM bits with one click and then you just enable it. So you can get, take all those fun little utilities, um, and then turn them into easily accessible extensions and also like instantly have large acts like large you know access to, to people to use the software um but no that already exists that's one of his projects so so and you're right that'll be very it's that thing isn't it you, you build something for yourself you will find useful and then other people will also find it useful uh we could use that on dot com uh, for feature requests um and then create bounties 
Um, and then other people could also use the same software for themselves and their own projects. There was an idea of doing a similar thing for directly into GitHub. Uh, I can't remember how it worked, but someone had a, a lightning project, which was pretty cool. And it was like a, a way of issuing bounties in directly in, in a repo. I forgot what it's called, but anyway, we also wanted to make it, man, it's like, there's so many things you could build on top of it. It's just finding the, it's finding the time I to do it. I have a feature request, <laughs> a big one. I want a Jitsi integration so that every Jitsi user automatically gets an Ellen Bits wallet and can fund it hopefully in the Jitsi interface. And then uh, with buttons in Jitsi, right, to boost uh, some amount of sats to a different You're speaking user. my language. I started making this thing called sats pay, which um, I was using Ellen Bits for. Uh, where it was basically um, micro payments for video content. So you could, so say if I wanted, if I'm stuck at play, you know, doing Wasabi stuff, then I could go on there, I could search for you, you're online, I could request a meeting with you, and then you get paid per minute um, while I ask you stupid questions. Yes, exactly. Um, and I thought that would be so useful. And it could, just, you can literally do it all through Jitsi because Jitsi have this great um, uh, API. Uh, and it's really easy to call through the browser. Um, and absolutely, that would be super cool. And it could totally be an Bits extension. Um, and it, it's, it has, particularly, it was with the lockdown stuff and like, you know, we'd, the boiler would go and I'd want access to a plumber just for a few minutes. So, you know, my little bodge job trying to fix the boiler, I could just, on my phone, I could just say, hey, Mr. Plumber, does that look legit? Is there anything else I should do? I could just, just for a few minutes, I just want a con to contact a professional for a few minutes. You know, my blitz is Absolutely. broken. I just want to contact uh, Christian. And he could also, you know, earn just a few sats here and there, giving people a little bit of advice. And those sats, they stack. Um, uh, great idea. 100%. Like, if someone wants to make that, I'll do a... I need to check the... Uh, what's the... I don't know what the Bitcoin price is. What's the Bitcoin price? Because <laughs> you, you talk about bounties and then whether... What have we got? Okay, I'll do. I'll, I'll chuck 0 0.01, 0 0.01. So not 0 0.1, 0 0.01 into a bounty for that for that extension to exist. I'd love it. I, I, I will add another 0 0.05 to that bounty. <laughs> oh God! Oh Jesus! That's quite high. Well, that is high. Oh, you're a player. I don't know if I can do. It. Right, I'll add a zero. So so far, I'll add 0 0.02. All right. So we're at 0. Point, which is fine. That's not sure because Bitcoin's got up in price now. Max, come on. So what it was a few a few months ago. So we're almost no, at two thousand. Zero point zero five Bitcoin is zero point zero five Bitcoin. All right, well, then let's see if we can get to. All right, all right. Oh, you bugger! No, come on, let's no, bring it down. We don't need it that big, honestly. Someone will do it for less than that, I think. Let's okay. Let's zero point zero four is a thousand pounds sterling. That's a that's a good deal of money. While Bitcoin is at the bottom too, may I add? So thousand pounds sterling now, probably like a hundred grand in a year's time. Um, so how about we both chuck, chuck 0 0.02 in, uh, and, and then, and then, fantastic. and then if we can't get anyone interested, we'll, uh, we'll increase it. How's that? <laughs> yeah, that is, that is amazing. By the way, I have a similar bounty open for BTC pay server for a while now. Um, and I was always hoping for the plugin system to finally uh, get released, but it seems that Ellen bits is somewhat of a modular alternative to BTC pay almost in, in some extenses. And uh, since, you know, this modular architecture is already there and we see just a flourishing of plugins and extensions coming to Ellen bits, uh, that's, that's a great architecture. That's extremely powerful. Yeah. And it's, 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 so the frameworks we're using, um, we're using something called Quartz, which is like a asynchronous version of Flask. It's like server software, Python server software. And in that, they have this cool thing called Blueprints, which is where we can have, so each extension is literally its own folder. Um, so currently, you know, there's enough extent, there's only, there's not so many extensions that you, you have to like search a library of extensions. Uh, there's just like, you know, I don't know how many there are, 20 of them. You can just look at on the page. Um, but in the future, it is plausible and possible because of the way we've laid it out, that you can search for an extension, it'll download the file, and then you know install any dependencies, um, and uh, and then it will work kind of like a WordPress type type thing. Uh, so it's it's all there ready for that in the future. But we're not quite there yet because obviously we haven't got enough extensions for to have to have that you know process. Uh, but yeah, the 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 frame I'm pretty stoked on the frameworks we've used. Um, VHF always complains about Python because uh, he's like you know one of these cool Go kids. 
but um it is very good for making things readable uh easy to you know um to verify and then also just as a, a learning tool like you know building an extension on limbits just as a learning tool for for learning some python's pretty cool because it's, it's it's fairly vanilla python it's not like you know, if you use something like django then it all gets a bit more complicated and hard to kind of figure out whereas you know this is we have a file for your api calls you have a file for you know your your, your pages which are being routed to and then you have a file for your, your database stuff you know for your put sending things and fetching things from your database so it's it's all pretty straightforward we need more educational tools though because then you know ultimately i mean the problem we're having at the moment is it's us lot anyone who learns how to build extensions starts wanting to make loads of extensions that's great but there's not enough not enough of those so we want more educational tools to maybe some workshops some conferences or something where people build extensions um and then and then we'll have more people co contributing extensions yeah btc pay servers um a fantastic project with incredible uh, people working on it um and uh i think it kind of like targets something different ellen bits you can use ellen bits for some of the stuff they do um but i don't know i mean it's like it's just options isn't it you give people more options um you don't want uh like an infrastructure where there's only one option to do one particular thing so they have plugins because i heard about this i think it was from one of your tweets actually I saw the the BTC Pay server. We're going to have plugins, um, so I wondered what what are what are has there been some examples of what these plugins will be? E yes, the, and this is still the underlying infrastructure still being built out and uh, taking longer uh, uh, than expected. <laughs> so it's still two weeks uh, till yeah. release, as always. <laughs> um, and but some of the cool extensions you could build is, for example, uh, you know, BTC Pay Transmuter. I'm no. not sure if you've heard that. This is already an existing thing that you can use, but it will be repurposed into a plugin, for example. And this is just some contingent if this, then that kind of thing. So if a payment comes oh, in, yeah. write an email, right? Or if a payment com comes in, forward 80% to this address and 20% to this exchange, right? Then oh, automatically cool. market sell it. Like uh, things like this, right? Um, then Dennis, that's developed by Cooks. Dennis Reimann is working on L, uh, BTC Bank, uh, yeah. which is actually quite similar to uh, Ellen Bits. Again, it's it's like this way to create custodial sub wallets within one Lightning node, right? So that yeah, you have he, the same Lightning channels and stuff. I think he contributed to Ellen Bits, um, Dennis Reimann, pretty early on. He contributed to one of my, I think, to my point of sale terminal pretty early on um, yeah he's, he's awesome yeah he's great well i will say that part of the reason i made ellen bits as well was because i tried to use the btc pay server api to connect to my gizmos and it pissed me off so <laughs> there was there was there was a, that was a little bit of a motivator um i i it was too complicated uh they need to sort that shit out it's too much uh, as much as i love the software i found communicating with this api to be a pain um did he contribute? Is he on the list of contributors? No, he's not. Oh, maybe it wasn't this. Then maybe it was another. Maybe it was another thing which he contributed to uh, one of my projects. Yeah, he's great. And then uh, Cox as well. Like, he's contributing to uh, the Nostar stuff. We all like. We're all interested in the same things, so we all exactly. pass across quite recent, quite quite often. Um, uh, yeah, I do think like well, we inform each other's work, don't we? So I more or less immediately after. So Alan Bits, one of the coolest things about Alan Bits when it first came out is you know from the browser you can access your camera and scan a qr code um uh and you know a lot of people were just like oh i didn't even realize you could do that you know from a browser you know um so uh that was a very simple function but cool and i think btc pay server now have that don't they? i remember seeing some tweet about it but that was that was quite soon after ellen bits um did that so you know maybe these plugins because uh there were a couple of people interested in we're looking at LM bits early on from BTC Pay servers such as Cox, so maybe they were like, "Oh yeah, shit, we need plugins too," uh, and that <laughs> benefits that benefits the BTC Pay server a lot. So, um, uh, you know, and the users. So yeah, so it doesn't doesn't really matter, you know, which what people use, but as long as it's a nice, useful bit of software, and if um, if we're like bullying them <laughs> into into adding more functions to their software, then that's cool. Um, uh, I hope we bully them into making their API easier to use. <laughs> yes, absolutely. 
it's 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 really maybe it's, we should start a cold crazy. war we should probably start a cold war because they're pretty good at like you know think of all those ak's which got built during the cold war if we, <laughs> if, if if uh bc pay server and alan bits have like a little cold war maybe it would make us really productive <laughs> Oh, well, I'm not sure. I mean, sure, they built a bunch of AK-47s, but what could else have built have been built with this capital? Right? Oh, so, uh, yeah, no, I actually think the way that we're doing it right now is quite solid, right? Everyone is is trying to solve problems. If someone finds a great solution to a difficult problem, then yeah. why not use that solution too? Yeah, maybe we'll merge at some point, turn into the same thing. <laughs> I don't even know if that's possible, but it probably isn't. That's probably entirely possible. There'll probably be some like third choice, which will appear, and it'd be far better than both of them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but no, I mean, it's it's just that a lot of this stuff is like you know proof of concept, isn't it? I mean, well, I suppose in saying that, we've been arguing that we've been saying that for years, haven't we? Like a lot of this Bitcoin stuff is proof of concept, but still experimental. Still experimental proof of concept, but now more and more, particularly that like with the South Salvador news, um, it seems that it, it's going beyond proof of concept, and uh, uh, people might start actually like using it on on mass. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that's kind of a scary thought. But then the legacy finance systems software is so shitty. I don't think our software can be as shitty as theirs. So we'll win either way. <laughs> Yeah. And I mean, you know, sure, Bitcoin is reckless and way too early at any point in time so far. But nevertheless, it works for individuals here and now. And it did so for many, many years. I mean, I've met people who are basically living on Bitcoin only since 2010, 11, uh, as early as that. Right. So sure, back in the day, much more difficult to do these things, but possible. Right? And throughout these years, as we continue to building more and more uh, usable tools, and then as the infrastructure and whole network effect continues to grow, uh, that becomes more and more possible for more people. Uh, and that is is really exciting to see. Uh, but but yes, like this is reckless. This is way too early. It, high chance that you're going to lose all of your Bitcoin with reckless uh. technology like this, right? <laughs> but hey, uh, if you're willing to take a little bit of risk and be reckless, these tools are incredibly powerful and they can be used in mind-blowing applications that we have never before thought about. Uh, so this is just hopefully going to spawn a flourishing ecosystem of, of innovation and, and new ideas uh, that will be quite beautiful to behold. Well, this is your R&D department, isn't it? So if you've got your company, then you have this R&D department coming up with all these harebrained things and um, proof of concepts. Um, and then, well, that's where your, you know, your cool things come from, isn't it? Your, your R&D department. Uh, and actually, the more flexibility and uh, you give those that that department, and the, the more um, the more you nurture it, the more cool things they come out with. So that's you know that's kind of what we're doing at the moment is we're R and Ding, uh, but then doing it in a way. Again, you know, not shilling LM bits more, but um, what's really nice about the architecture is you have the core software, and it's a bit like you know Bitcoin Core. Like you keep, we don't really fiddle around with that too much. We don't mess about with it, you know. Um, and with ex all the extensions being there in separate little things. There's only so much damage an extension can do, really, uh, to your Allen bits install. Um, so you know, say if it's just we can't spend your funds, or it can't, it, it can only really. Gem I think pretty much all of them can only generate invoices. So you know, the the, mo the worst thing they can do, which we had an attacker do, was just generate gazillions of invoices, which is a massive pain in the ass. But you know, that's it's not the end of the world. They're not taking your money. Um, uh, so I'm always actually quite amazed this thing, which you know. I as a hobbyist made and then was able to seduce some genius developers into working on early on to you know refactor the code and make it good um it's secure like it's got you know we're the ones it's our node it's got our funds on it um well, and, the, and the users funds I suppose uh but it's you know and occasionally there has been sizable amounts of money on there but then the policy has been, well, just break it for a few days, scare everybody, and then put it back online and watch them take all their money back. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's it's like it's it's secure, you know. Touch wood. Um, you know, when you think of banking software, how shit it is. You know, just a few people who got together and they work in a free and open source way, they can make a secure piece of software. I mean, we're in beta, so you know, don't take my word for it. But you know, it's so far. 
Alanbits.com has, has done very well. Um, it just shows me the power of free and open source and how these proprietary, because banks, they don't have free and open source software. You know, they've got their proprietary pieces of software um, where it's all just a, a closed black box. Um, whereas, you know, oh, shit, it's all out on, on display. You can go and look through the code, verify it, and try and find vulnerabilities directly in the code rather than probing it, you know, for vulnerabilities. So it's far more open and easier to exploit. But yeah, it seems to be as, as secure, if not more secure, than some of the shitty software they run. Uh, so yeah, it's great. And you probably find the same with Wasabi as well. Um, uh, I mean, how many people are working on Wasabi? Now it's a big project, isn't it? How many people are working on it? I think on, on GitHub, there are probably close to 100 contributors, maybe probably more, actually. Um, and, and the the company has grown quite substantially. So there, there's the company CK Snacks, which yeah. is dedicated to building Wasabi Wallet software and using it. Right? Yeah. So the company builds both the client and the backend, specifically runs the backend server and, and, and uses that to coordinate coin joins and to get paid. And then that revenue gets uh, then re... Uh, purposed to making Wasabi better. And I think by now uh, we're getting to over 40 uh, employees there. So wow. uh, it's, it's quite a rapid growth for a, what, th three, four year old company. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, if you, if you get bored of any of those contributors, or you know, <laughs> <laughs> if you want to point them in our direction, <laughs> I think that's a good model. That's a good for these, for these, it's a shame when you have a good idea, just go down that VC route where they just get VC money and then it all just gets tied up in bollocks. You know, mm -hmm. you see them in Bitcoin conferences and they've got these huge elaborate displays and they're just trying to burn through their round because they got another round, blah, blah, blah. It seems to be a very sort of a US centric way of doing things. Um, but it's a shame when, when projects go that way, I think, because you, you just see no development then. You know, you see no innovation. Mm -hmm. It slows right down. Um, but then also, you know, if something's just entirely free and open source, it can be quite slow. It's quite a slow process. So if you can have like a, um, a proprietary arm or thing or service, you know, uh, which then pays for the, some of the development of the free and open source stuff, uh, like Wasabi are doing. I mean, that's, I mean, obviously that's the, the model, which a lot of free and open source projects do, isn't it? Um, uh, so yeah, I think that's probably is the play for for sort of a, a more rapid, but also non sucky growth is to is is to do that is to build some sort of revenue model, and then ha pay for all the development of the um, the free and open source stuff through that. Yeah, and yeah, it's 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 amazing how how CK Snacks achieved that again w without any major capital uh, yeah. rounds. Like it, it, there was one small investment, but that was more for legal bureaucracy reasons rather yeah. than for the actual fundraising um but yeah the, the it's amazing to see that a company can really generate a substantial amount of revenue uh by providing services in the bitcoin infrastructure system uh it's yeah it's 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 great it's it's incredibly promising and sure ck snacks is, is one successful example but there are countless more uh already now and there will be many 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 more in the future yeah 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 it's all good stuff it's all good stuff congrats on the wasabi i'll um i'll certainly look to get the bowser wallet working with the uh, wasabi but I, this is the thing with the allen bits stuff i'm so excited about the allen bits thing and i really want the bowser wallet thing to exist but like i spent a couple of weeks then working on bowser wallet and then i just kind of fell behind on the allen bits and like i wasn't mm -hmm. helping out with the issues and i've got a bunch of half made extensions which i go back to and i can't remember what i've done and <laughs> so <laughs> um yeah, this is why I just need to please if there's anyone out there in the audience who wants to contribute and get involved maintaining and and, and taking the Bowser wallet projects forward um uh cause Spectre's great um I think I'm so I'm that's the thing I'm a hardware wallet project I'm most excited about Spectre um mostly because it gives step an, an excuse to make all the libraries which then <laughs> other hardware wallets can use but uh in order you know, you can't just have one, it's a bit like BTC Pay server, isn't it? You can't just have one solution in a free and open source environment. Um, it, you've got to have some, you've got to have some alternatives. You've got to have some other systems, um, which then good to do that. Good old fashioned computer science thing. It'd be not to share resource, share code, you know, share development time 
as much as they can and and and, and help each other um uh so yeah i'm i i that's something i love about the the hardware wallet the diy hardware wallet space is early on stepan's got those libraries in the bag so now it's within his interest to for everyone to use those libraries because it makes it hardens those libraries it gets people you know experimenting with them and then that then makes spectre better um so yeah uh if you you're doing a great service whoever you are out there developer genius developer out there who wants to pick up the reins on Dow's wallet and make it good um if you if you if you push that project forward because it then helps all the other diy hardware wallet projects get better easier improves the libraries um and then you know you can use it as a multi-sig thing um, in your spectre thing or with your seed signer that's great yeah it's cool yeah for sure so lots lots of further work to do uh and as always we need more contributors uh, to get all this uh, all these problems solved uh so you know come the join worst us. do you ever do you ever find that like sometimes you'll meet a genius developer like you i don't know so there's been occasions where i put out a bounty or i've like uh i've gone and pleaded with a bunch of develop bitcoin you know, developers um and then you'll meet this genius developer and you're like oh and they, they'll say they haven't contributed too much because they didn't want they weren't sure what to work on and i'm like god damn i wish i had your skills <laughs> to be able to because some of these people they could just sit down and what would take me a day will take them like an hour you know um uh for them to just knock it out the, the code uh so there's plenty of good talent out there but a lot of them, they're just, yeah, they're not, not sure what to, to, to contribute to. Um, but, you know, just please start contributing. Help us plebs who are struggling to, to, to build things which are half decent. Yeah, yeah, that is very true. So, Ben, it was a pleasure talking to you. We really covered quite a lot uh, from, from your background in, in education and, and why you're so excited to, to be in Bitcoin and to, to work on these technologies. And then all the amazing hardware magic that you tinkered with. Seriously, it's, it's quite visionary. Like you've, you've manifested so many cool things that just show how much fun and excitement can be had here in Bitcoin. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's really just the beginning. I mean, once you, you have these underlying infrastructures built up, the, the actual use cases with them are endless. I mean, anything that can be controlled with electricity it can now have some Bitcoin payments uh, in front of it. That's just absolutely amazing. Yeah. And browser, we... browser wallet itself, right? Awesome DIY hardware with uh, so cheap uh, and still so, so powerful and so useful. Um, uh, and Ellen Bits, which I'm just blown away by uh, as how it has been uh, advancing over the last couple months now. Uh, incredibly feature rich uh, to just make uh, a lightning bullet incredibly useful. Like basically it's just a lightning bullet, right? But it has a lot of cool features like sub wallets that make accounting easy uh, and all these extensions like paywalls uh, and hopefully this call application now soon after our bounty. Oh um, yeah. So, that's it. awesome. yeah. so what can, let's nail that before we go. So the bounty is 0 0.04. That's a big, um, that's a big Alan bits bounty right there. <laughs> That's, that's the biggest I think we've had so far. 0 0.04 for, so me and you, 0 0.02 each, for a, uh, an extension which creates what a, 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 a page. So I, I put in a Jitsi link in the, in the back end, and then it creates a page which I can click on. I can share that page with people, and then what, they, what can they do in that page? Is that right? Yeah, so it would be cool if everyone can send money to everyone. Uh, if as a possibility, right? So every uh, every user that joins gets an Ellen Bits account and can potentially receive money to there. Uh, either he receives money, you know, from himself if if he just funds it from his own Lightning wallet on the phone, right? Uh, or from other users if they like what he is saying. Uh, and then there could be uh, some settings like every minute that the person is is speaking, send him a hundred sats, right? Or then. Uh, also have a, a boost button. So if you especially liked what someone is saying, send him a one-time amount, right? So type in 500 sats and click on, on the, the, the face of the person uh, and magically 500 sats fly over to him. Hmm. That was nice. So I, so I have this page and then as soon as somebody has the link to that page, they open it, boom, they have some very, you know, basic wallet functionalities where they can send money to it and send money from it to the, the content provider. 
you could i bet you could do a lot of this with but then also you could receive money no i suppose you just need to send money don't you you just need a balance to be able to send to the, the content provider well but it uh, um the way that i would like to use this is not just in a presentation style right where one person gives information and then the one person should receive all, or <gasps> oh, I see. Will receive all the money Right? But this is for group conversations. Uh, I do these Socratic seminars uh, among you know eight, ten different people, and everyone is talking there, and everyone is providing incredibly valuable insights. And I just have the urge when someone is saying something awesome to toss him some sats, even though I'm the presenter or the organizer of the event. You could do it through um, LNURL stuff. You wonder if you could have like an LNURL pay to send money to, and then an LNURL withdraw to withdraw the money from, and then just have a balance um uh because you don't really need like transaction data because it's just it's just more of a one-off kind of thing isn't it so mm -hmm. then then i can you know i literally just click on it i mean as far as the gui is concerned there's like a fund i fund it and then i just there's a qr code i scan it i send some sats to it through my screen and it's just an lnur i'll pay qr code and then if i i have a, a balance uh and you, i might find someone tips me and if they tip me um, at the end or whatever, I, there's just that LNUR withdraw. I can click on to reveal, and then I can just scan it. I can just pull all the funds out of it if I want to. Um, uh, I wonder if you could do that, or yeah, that that could be that could be like a, a a very simple, you know, rather than have to generate an invoice uh, for an amount like inputting an amount because that would kind of be annoying. You could just have the same QR code, and you just like I could just scan it with my wallet. I do that in my wallet, don't I? I say my on my phone wallet. I say, okay, I want to send a thousand sats or two thousand sats, and then I start <laughs> clicking on the different people in the chat and sending sats to them too. Yes, exactly. And the nice thing with doing it with Alan Bits uh, is that the the wallet magic it's it's a hot wallet, right? For for each of these users in the Alan Bits infrastructure. Yeah. Um, or for each of the Jitsi call participants, I mean, right? So then you can just have a button, you know, and you don't need to worry about QR codes at all. Uh, and you just need to make an internal transfer from one Ellen Bits user to the other. Yeah. The only thing with the only problem is with, so, um, you know, I don't mind doing custodianship things, but if, so in Ellen Bits in the uh, back end, it's possible to take one user ID and then or a couple of user IDs and then restrict the LM bits install to those user IDs. So I can be the only one which uses my LM bits. And if somebody gets the URL through, you know, say if I'm using, if I've got like a point of sale thing or a paywall or whatever, they can't then go to that URL and start generating wallets and using me as a custodian without like my permission, you know? So it's quite nice. Um, I'm just thinking of the person who may want to set that up, but they, they don't want other people to have access to the LM bits as a custodian, but they do want to be able to share one of these Jitsi calls or host one of these Jitsi calls where everyone's got like a temporary wallet just for the call. Um, and that's why I thought if you did it with LN URLs or you, and then it would just be a case of, you know, because if you do it the other way, like you're saying, then yeah, they could just have a wallet, like they have a link, they click on it and then boom, there's their wallet with all the transactions in. I don't know, maybe your way is better. Maybe that's just the, the what you sacrifice for, you know, providing that service. Um, or maybe you could have a timer. So you have to look, you have to take the funds off this wallet within 24 hours or else I'm going to eat them. <laughs> maybe that could be, maybe there could be an option when you set up the Jitsi um, call that, uh, you know, all the people who join that Jitsi call who have a wallet, um, they then have, you know, a few hours afterwards to take the funds away um uh or else your you know your your wallet's just going to cons your llm bits is also just going to consume them <laughs> rather than using them use getting used to using you as a custodian anyway whichever way it goes um somebody has certainly set up a uh an issue feature request on in fact i'll do it i'll put the feature request thing on llm bits with the bounty um and then they can use that issue then to discuss the various different ways of doing it um, and what would be the best options for doing it and then try and get some input from the rest of the community on, on what would be the best way of doing it. Um, yeah. That sounds fantastic. Ah, what a great idea. That'd be great. Everyone would use it. Everyone yes, would, yes. Everyone, if, you're, if, you're, if you're making a Jitsi call, why not include payments, like the ability to be able to send funds to each other exactly. in an easy, super duper easy way. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, uh, I, I think that's, 
yeah it's 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 great like and i, I and i see how well it works with podcasting 2.0 in the context of listening to content right yeah. but i think it will work even better when you're actually part of the conversation yeah i mean i've, I've tried to do that with streamer copilot so i've got this extension called streamer copilot which is where you can like you have an lnurl pay on the screen and then somebody scans it's safe you're doing like a i did it with world crypto network actually and i had um because you can have webhooks so i had it connected to a smoke machine and then this sl slapping machine which I, I made uh and then if someone paid they could have it slap me in the face and blow smoke in my face but you could also have it um display like a, a you know a, a gif on the screen on the so basically i was like um using obs um and then uh so you make a virtual webcam with the browser window the video is actually streamed into the browser window and then you connect that to obs and it, it works like well um is there's no there's no lag or anything uh but then the only thing is that is very much for like the presentation style which you were saying but actually mm -hmm. it would be super cool for it to be go bi-directional baby we don't want the unidirectional exactly. payments do we it's, you know so yes, 2000 yes. and whatever uh we want bi-directional yeah so so you're so so it's, it's integrating jitsi into a page so everyone's got their qr code which you can send sats to with or without the your wallet you could you could use your external wallet i suppose you could just scan a qr yes, code and send yes. it to them uh interoperability um, of an open network standard fucking amazing exactly plus by direction yeah it's great it's definitely worth a 0 0.04 um and then also as well as getting the bounty you'll also go down in history as the the legendary creator of whatever it's called <laughs> no, you know the, the bounty is super cheap because again i intend to use this to earn as much sats as possible right so i'm quite confident that if this technology exists i'm going to earn much more than just two million yeah that's nice that is it's a really good idea okay i'm gonna i'm gonna make that feature i'm gonna go away now i'm gonna make that feature on lm bits so any listener please do go on the lm bits repo and if you can contribute to it then fuck man there's like a thousand dollars there um a thousand pounds sorry so you know how many dollars that is we shall soon be worth an absolute fortune because Bitcoin's going to go up in price. Um, so yeah, get on it, developers. Exactly. That is it. Ben, that was a fantastic conversation. I enjoyed it a lot, as always, talking to you. It's it's lovely. Oh, it was great to catch up, man. It was great to catch up. I hope to see you soon when the world resumes um, and we, you know, go to those Bitcoin conferences and drink too much like we're supposed to be doing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly lovely tribe gatherings all so right. ben one more time tell all the peers where they can find you uh i suppose twitter is probably the best place uh arc btc i think it's uh, yeah arc btc or you can go on github um and what's my name on github i think it's arc btc ben arc ben arc no it's arc btc it's arc btc uh oh. maybe it's ben arc on twitter i don't know i always get muddled up i should have kept the same <laughs> the same the same name for all of them wait there sorry i have to check Static in it. It's Arc BTC. Yes, it's Arc BTC on both. There we are. I did change it. Um, yeah. So if you, so, ARC BTC <laughs> on GitHub and on Twitter, go there, and then yeah, contribute. Fantastic, Pierce. You heard it here first. Uh, build amazing Bitcoin technology to get other people paid and pay them as well, and then you get paid too. <laughs> that's that's awesome. We're gonna get everyone paid <laughs> as yeah. it should be. Ben, thank you again very much for coming on, and Pierce, see you on the next show. Bye bye. Bye bye.